Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this short game to the video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things with NVIDIA. News has broke that the company will be using Samsung for the manufacturing of its Ampere range of GPUs. This would include, you would presume, the RTX 30 series. After all, it's very unlikely that NVIDIA will be dropping ray tracing from its future GPU products. So Samsung will be offering NVIDIA their 7nm EUV process. This makes quite a big change from the company previously really using TSMC, although there were a couple of GPUs that have used Samsung, but primarily their uh, manufacturer of choice has always been uh, TSMC. So why is this? Well, there are a couple of theories. The first is that Samsung's EUV process, it just may be superior to what uh, TSMC is able to offer. But the most likely uh, solution actually to the question is that Samsung are allegedly undercutting the prices that TSMC are charging for the manufacture of their silicon. So obviously if it costs NVIDIA less and the performance of the two nodes is roughly equal, it just makes sense for NVIDIA to go for the cheaper option. We know very little about Ampere thus far, we don't know if it's just essentially a refresh of Turing, in other words very much the same architecture but with higher clock frequencies and an increase in say the number of CUDA cores, after all the shift to 7nm it does mean that you can have much denser silicon, or possibly it's just a rather large tweak to the architecture, much the same way that we saw from Maxwell to Pascal, or it could be a radically new uh, direction for NVIDIA. I do suspect though that certain things at the very least will be tweaked for the next generation of GPUs. Possibly we will see an improvement to ray tracing performance either because of the ray tracing cores are just more capable or they could simply bump up the number of ray tracing cores inside of the GPU. Whether this will mean that the ratio of RT cores per SM changes at the moment. One SM equals one ray tracing core and also eight tensor cores. So whether this ratio will change or they may simply increase the number of uh, SMs inside the GPU thanks to the denser node which would have the natural benefit of increasing the number of RTs. Oh, and while we're on the subject of NVIDIA news, I also want to discuss a post that has appeared on Reddit, and this appears to be a leaked image from Dell. Now, this image actually would appear to show a GTX 1650 Ti graphics option, which isn't the first time we've actually heard of a GTX 1650 Ti. It was actually filed on the ECC uh, earlier on this year, and of course we've also seen e e EEC filings, excuse me, for Ampere as well, so it's possible that NVIDIA are going to be releasing this, but it's also not the first time that Dell have done a typo, and honestly it's really easy to make a typo, especially if you've made like multiple product flyers that day, so for example they could have meant to type in 1660 Ti or just 1650 without the Ti or what have you, so these things are definitely possible, so obviously until there's an official announcement, uh, don't count your chickens and all. With that said, there is definitely a price gap player between the 1650 and the 1660, so NVIDIA could certainly create the TI, I just don't necessarily want another card in that uh, SKU lineup, it's just, it's already so crowded in the lower end. It also uh, brings to an, uh, us to another question regarding the pricing of these cards. Allegedly, the cards such as the RTX 2060, 2070, and 2080 are going to be receiving a price cut up to 100 bucks, which is actually kind of significant, especially for, let's say, the RTX 2070, because many of us have always said that that card is kind of expensive. I wonder if that means we're also going to see price cuts for NVIDIA's 16 series as well, particularly in light at the moment you can get like a really good deal on an RX 570. Obviously rebates and all are even more useful for bringing down the price, but you can get like an RX 570, I think I've seen them for like $120, $130, which is actually really good. 
Moving swiftly over to Team Red, and there is actually a couple of pieces of AMD news, the first of which is a dump of the CPU ID of the Ryzen 3600. It's really interesting actually how many Ryzen 3600 leaks there have been, but basically burpkus in let's say the 3800X, which is kind of a sad, we've also got a quick benchmark we'll go through later on, which is also a 3600, but first of all let's discuss the uh, CPU ID dump because it does actually com uh, confirm a couple of things. Well, I say confirm. Obviously, the CPUs are not le are not released yet, so this information could be incorrect, but it's looking very likely. The Twitter user Inslat X64 has actually made a rather nice, uh, too long didn't read summary of this. But Matisse is 870F10. And we have two CCXs, unsurprising, because we know that each CCX uh, is capable of four cores. So obviously, six cores means you're going to need to have at least two CCXs. But each of these CCXs has three active cores. So this is most likely the best scenario in terms of latency and performance. And very similar to what, honestly, I and many of you probably expected AMD to do. It was very unlikely that we would see, like, four cores and two cores simply because of yields and just latency and all of the other bits and pieces. We also have some changes in level one instruction size. This is something that I had actually posted about before, although the image was, you know, suspect of whether it was accurate or not, but there are a couple of other posts now that seem to confirm that we do see a reduction in level one instruction size from 64 kilobytes down to uh, just 32 kilobytes, but the associativity of the CPU has risen from 4 to 8, and the change that we have known about for quite some time is the level 3 cache has gone to 16 megabytes. This is a doubling of the previous 8 megabytes from what we had with the Zen architecture, and there is also some changes in the uh, level 2 uh, data translation look aside buffer as well. It's risen from 1536 up to 2048. We'll also quickly go over the results of yet another benchmark that has leaked online. This was also a geek bench. We've seen so many of these 3600 uh, results. So I'm going to go over this one pretty quickly. This is actually on a Biostar board. It's an X571. I'll be very curious actually to see how well Biostar does in the. Um, Matisse Arena. I have to say that people seem to overlook their boards, and I've actually reviewed a couple of their uh, boards before, and they do really well. You know, really cheap uh, comparatively, but also really not bad quality. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. Anyway, um, so of course this is once again a Ryzen 5 3600, 6 cores, 12 threads, base clock of 3.6 gigahertz. The reason this is even less interesting though than a couple of other leaks is because the clock frequencies for the memory are, is actually really low. It's just running at 2133 megahertz, and this obviously has a tangible impact in the performance. With that said though, uh, having a look at memory latency, it's still not awful. It'll be very interesting to see what happens uh, in terms of how well the memory bandwidth scales when there's uh, faster memory versus slower memory and lower latency versus higher latency dims. Now let's shift our focus onto AMD's Nave because what we do know of course about this next generation architecture is a significant performance increase compared to Vega up to 25% improvement at the same clock frequency. We will see a up to 50% reduction in power consumption and many other shiny things. However, there has been a leak that has appeared. This leak originates from South Korea's radio research agency because the new AMD Narve GPUs have just passed certification there. But what's really interesting is that the certification is dated to June the 5th this year, which, well, isn't too long ago. <laughs> and furthermore, there are five different variants of the new RDNA graphics silicon that we can actually spot, with D182 being the current code, but there are also a few others. We have a model name as well as several derived model names as well. And once again, the certification date for this was the 5th of June. So what's going on here? Well, what we do know is AMD have obviously confirmed the RX 5700 series, and 
from what we've learned about AIBs, there will be most likely a couple of different variants of those GPUs. So it's possible that the other cards that we're seeing here are going to be products that launch in the future. Now, whether they're going to be lower end SKUs or higher end SKUs, it's just impossible to say. If you think about it though, one of the key um, selling points allegedly from you know the rumors of Narve anyway, is that it will be from the lower end all the way up to the mid range, up to around the RTX 2070 performance. So I wouldn't be surprised if we did see some SKUs that launch that let's say compete against the RTX 2060 and also Nvidia's 16 series so AMD can start phasing out Polaris. After all, Polaris is still, you know, relevant but a little long in the tooth now. At the end of the day though, until we actually get official confirmation from the company, it's just speculation. Finally, let's discuss E3 2019 from the perspective of Microsoft because Brad Sams over at Forward.com has posted several leaks of what we can expect from Microsoft at their conference. Apparently, we will not be seeing specifications discussed at uh, E3 2019 from Microsoft for the next generation Xbox. So they will not necessarily be discussing things such as the number of teraflops or the number of CPU cores or at the very least their clock frequencies. Instead, they're going to be discussing things in rougher terms. With the lower end Xbox known as Lockhart, they're going to be shooting for at least four times the level of performance and with Anaconda, which is the higher end SKU, they're shooting for at least two times the performance. How I'm personally understanding this is that compared to the original Xbox One, uh, Lockhart will be four times faster, and compared to the current Xbox One X, in the very basic T-flop numbers anyway, it will be twice the performance uh, with Anaconda. So Anaconda will be twice the performance at the very minimum compared to Xbox One X. Although you do need to take into consideration that with a much more refined architecture, it's not necessarily just like two times the performance. You cannot ever compare T-flop to T-flops when obviously you're dealing with a completely different architecture. At the end of the day, Microsoft will be leveraging some variant of AMD's next generation GPUs, which is known as RDNA. So obviously those GPUs are much more efficient than what the uh, GPUs that are found inside either the PlayStation 4 or Microsoft's current Xbox One or Xbox One X systems. Supposedly, we will also be learning further information about the backwards compatibility for Xbox One X games. So in theory anyway, according to this leak, they can actually enhance the graphics and gameplay further still, but once again, the main thing right now is to play their cards close to their chest in regards to the specifications. I suspect that this is probably going to be partly to keep the hype train going, but also because they're probably still trying to analyze the best cost and uh, performance ratios, but also of course Sony as well. We've already heard from Phil Spencer that there will be around 14 titles that Microsoft will be showing off during E3. And obviously we know that Gears of War 5 is going to be there. We've actually seen that through official channels that they are actually teasing. We will learn a lot more about Gears of War 5. And we'll also learn more about downloadable content for State of Decay 5 and also Forza uh, 4 expansion will be there as well. Uh, Halo Infinite trailer, as well as gameplay, there will be some Age of Empires information and Fable details may also be included, and there will be three new IPs that have not previously been revealed. Allegedly, they're going to be distancing Halo Infinite from the Xbox One, and they're going to be demoing it on a PC, but still using an Xbox controller. The reason for this is that at least according to Forager.com, they don't want to, I suppose, tarnish uh, Halo Infinite's graphics by running it on older hardware. As for third-party titles, well, according to Forager.com, we will be seeing a very strong presence of third-party at Microsoft Conference. In fact, it, according to this anyway, is one of the strongest uh, conferences Microsoft have ever had when it comes to third parties. We'll also be learning a lot more about the xCloud servers and how it will compare against Google Stadia. But I am going to be very excited to see E3. E3 this year, normally I'm not like super hyped. The last couple of E3s have been like, eh. Mostly because, well, obviously there's not been no next generation consoles that have been revealed. And yeah, announcements have not really been that exciting to me. But this year it's a bit different. We are going to be seeing Nvidia 
launch something or another, something super. Uh, AMD, obviously with Narve, and hopefully also some Ryzen 3000 overclocking stuff, at least that's what's been hinted. Plus, Microsoft E3 conference is looking really good, at least if what uh, Phil Spencer and Microsoft have teased turns out to be true, plus the rumours as well. So I definitely will be super excited about this year's E3, which is nice. I... I'm looking forward to actually being excited about E3 again, to be totally honest with you. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff if you have. Like, share, comment and subscribe because it helps the channel out a ton. I'd also like to thank everyone who has been emailing me and contacting me via social media recently. It means an awful lot that you are actually spending time and watching our videos as well as contacting us. It, it It's just awesome. So thanks very much for that. You can also find us on Patreon down below, as well as Amazon affiliate links. So if you need to, I don't know, cut the grass or something, you need to buy a new lawnmower, if you use an uh, uh, Amazon affiliate link, it doesn't cost you anything more, but it does provide us a few pennies. With all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.